we're gonna begin with the end. This is the Relic B50. It is simultaneously awesome and terrible at the same time. It's a speaker amp with phono stage, Bluetooth, HDMI, ARC, USB, optical connections with a subwoofer output at $150. That may be a little ambitious. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Relic V50. This is going to be a bit of a different video format. Why? Because this product is actually good in some ways. I recently did the H50, a review of the Aurelic H50, and I was not kind to that product because it comes in at $400. This one comes in at $150, and yesterday it was on sale all the way down to $127. And now Aurelic is staying in their lane. $127, even $150 is not a bad price. Actually, in some ways, it's a steal for this product. This is a do-it-all amplifier. The power specs are 50 watts into four. That's about all they give you. I have the RSL CG23M connected to them, which have a sensitivity of 89 dB, and they are four ohm speakers. And it drove them just fine at reasonable listening levels. What is reasonable listening levels? 75 to 80, 85 dB peaks is pretty loud with hdmi e arc at 150 dollars this is probably the this is the most affordable product that i've seen to integrate that technology let's talk about what i don't like this little product has a bit of a secret it has an app and that app actually has some decent functionality but there are also things about that app that I don't like. If you notice on the front, there's a power toggle. Turn it on or you turn it off. This also comes with a remote control. And since it has an app, you would think that, hey, if I just leave it on, as soon as I turn the TV on, it's gonna pop it back into the HDMI eARC mode, which it does not. So you can put it into that mode after this has fundamentally gone to sleep and it goes to sleep fairly quickly and I could not find a setting to change it to, like, don't ever go to sleep. So when the TV turns back on, you have to either come over here and manually select eARC, or you have to do it through the remote control, or you have to do it through the app. Either way, when Paw Patrol gets turned on, no sound until you do something about it. The app is pretty cool, sometimes frustrating. One of the things about the app that is completely laughable is the bass boost. It puts so much boost, and I'm talking 12, 16, maybe even 20 dB boost, and I'm not exactly sure what frequency it's at. If I had to guess, it would probably be around 150 or 200 hertz. It's unlistenable. And the RSL CG23M speakers roll off at 80 hertz. So it puts such a huge boost on these things that it completely covers up the mid-range. You can put on the bass boost and pull back bass a little bit. But when I put on bass boost, I had to pull the bass back down negative 8 dB. Bass boost, unusable. It's like being inside a 55-gallon drum during a hailstorm. Terrible. It has Bluetooth transmission, which I don't really understand. It's kind of a cool feature. So what you can do is you can send the info coming into this from your TV or from whatever you have hooked up to this to a pair of Bluetooth headphones or to a pair of Bluetooth speakers which I guess is cool. In a way, it's somewhat kind of wireless at night. I think it's kind of cool. There's other products that do that. Apple TV does that. It did work, but it was a little bit sketchy. It would lose connection a lot, but when it worked, it worked. It has too many features. It's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, and actually pretty bad at some, but it is way better than the H50. Let's talk about some things that I do like. It has an incredible feature set for $150. I know, I just said that's kind of one of the bad things too. The phono stage on the back here is actually not bad. I had an entry level turntable, a new one that I can't talk about just yet, but I will be able to talk about this week. So you should subscribe so you can learn about all the new stuff that's coming out. Two days live prime coverage, it's gonna be awesome. You don't want to miss it, so please subscribe and like this video. Phono stage is okay. I compared it to the internal phono stage of an entry-level turntable, and I would say they were pretty similar. So if you have an old turntable or a turntable without a phono preamp, 
This will get you by and it won't sound horrible. The HDMI eARC works great when this thing doesn't fall asleep. It works flawlessly. Hooked it up and it worked just fine. Subwoofer output works flawlessly. The tone controls, they work great. This was one of the biggest gripes I had about the H50 is its tone controls were fundamentally unusable. If you got beyond two levels of adjustment on the H50, it sounded terrible. This one, while still heavy handed, is not nearly as heavy handed as the H50. And since the app has mid range control, you can actually dial this into sounding like you want it to sound on a variety of different speakers. I used it on the RSLs. I also had it on the BS41s from ELAC, which is a much tougher to drive speaker. It drove it okay. But the reason why this sounded good on the ELACs was because of the tone controls, specifically the mid-range tone controls. This reminds me of the tone controls on the Klipsch, the 7s, and the 9s. With the mid-range control, you can kind of dial this in to sound good on a variety of speakers. I like that this doesn't have a streamer built in. That was one of Aurelix things early on is they integrated a streamer. So they were kind of like the affordable blue sound competition. But the problem was their streamer isn't that great. It doesn't have gapless playback. And with the Ween coming in at $150, more specifically the Ween Mini coming in around $78 sometimes when it's on sale, those products do a much better job than the Aurelic streamer ever did. And Aurelic hasn't really updated its streamer to be competitive with the Ween. So I don't wanna pay for a streamer that I don't like in a product. With a B50, you don't have to pay for it. And since you don't have to pay for it, this is cheaper at $150. A lack of a feature is actually a feature for me. So what are my final thoughts? In a vacuum, if you don't compare this to anything else, it sounds pretty good. And that's where this product lives. This product lives in a second bedroom, a cabin, a yurt, maybe a houseboat, maybe a rowboat. But if you don't have super high expectations and you just listen to this for what it is, which is a $150 integrated amp with an internal DAC, HDMI eARC, Bluetooth, which you can transmit to Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones, has a remote control and a speaker amp inside for $150. If you just think about it that way, this is an outstanding product and it has an app. That app isn't completely usable in some feature sets, but it still works on some things and you can still dial it in to get something to sound good. This sounds good for $150. Don't go comparing this to an A07 or V3 because it's not going to sound as good. You're going to have to spend a bunch of money on those products to get the same feature set as you have on this. Which feature set that you want is up to you though. This thing has so many features, not everybody is going to use all of them. I wish these speaker binding posts were missing and in its place were RCA outputs. I wish this thing was just a preamp because then you can start adding very capable and affordable power amps. Fozzy Audio BT20A Pro, Fozzy Audio V3, AIMA A07 Pro. You can actually add something that sounds phenomenal and can drive a lot more speakers. If you're looking for a soundbar replacement, I don't think you can get much better than this. Also has a USB thumb drive connection, USB-C DAC. There's just too many features for this to be a standout sonically. That's why this thing should go in your Airbnb or something. It works. It actually works. It had my head bopping. But if you do get this, you need to have reasonable expectations. And that expectation is there's a whole bunch of feature set for $150. And all of it combined is okay. And sometimes good. So highly recommended for the right use case scenario. If you're just into music, don't get this. Much better options for just music. Even the T9 Pro, the Duke Audio ST01 Pro. A Fozzy Audio V3 and a Ween Pro. That comes in just north of $200 and it's gonna be way better than this for music. If Ween came out with something that had an HDMI arc on the back, that would be an awesome product. So Aurelic, make this, just take the speaker amp out of it. Charge the same amount. Get a little bit better phono stage, a little bit better DAC. 
and you've got a winner. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon on patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord group, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you anymore. So it's a great way to support the channel. You can also buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Put some money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Finally, you can just like this video and subscribe. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless maybe you're using this, but you have reasonable expectations. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.